Hello and welcome to the round 12 review for Supercoach 2022. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. And today we'll discuss how we went. And yeah, it's a special episode uh, this week because I think we've hit 5,000 subscribers. Um, I think we might be just almost there, but we'll round it up, call it 5,000. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed and supported the channel. And also we traded Heaney this week. So uh, follow the channel a few years ago. I traded him in and then out, then back in, then back out. Um, yeah, it just didn't, didn't, we didn't know if he was injured or not back then, but those were the good days. Um, but yeah, a um, bit of nostalgia, traded him this week, and of course we lost points on that trade. So uh, no no other way I'd rather have it. Um, Supercoach relationship with Isaac has not been great, uh, but nonetheless, um, see how it goes long term. We traded him to Tim English. So to celebrate, we're going to do a shot of Balantines, Irish, no, um, blended Scotch whiskey. So, um, from George Ballantyne. Oh, I thought so. I thought it was Ballantyne, but I, th- I thought it was Spanish because everything else is like European in our uh, alcoholic cupboard. So we'll go. We'll say Ballantines. Um, so we'll do a shot of this. So, cheers to that. <sighs> not <clears throat> if you know me. You are not a big alcohol drinker. Um, but yeah, get that one out of the way. So should be good. Um, I'd had a few wines at a at a work function a few weeks ago. I forgot what it was like to you know put yourself in a good mood, have a few drinks, but um yeah, I barely barely drink at all. So, uh, yeah, see how we go. And for some reason, my heart rate just went up. I don't know what's wrong with me, but yeah, I have weird dietary requirements, all that. But anyway, we'll move on. So how did we go this week? Oh, I didn't even say how we went. Uh, we scored uh, two thousand one hundred sixteen. And we're ranked 4,300. So I went up in the ranks, went up 3,000. So you want to go up in the buys for sure. Uh, last last year in the buy rounds, first two weeks were okay. I think last week, the last week of the buys was a catastrophe that I've never had in Supercoach before. So I think this week, this this year, we're a bit more set up, a bit better for the buys. So and their extra trades in the year kind of helped that as well. So. Um, yeah, hopefully, I think this week we had five premiums out. Probably our worst ones too, like Butters, Cogs, Crips, I can, you can categorize in that. Short, I think in his current role, is probably the worst defender. And then Hewitt's been fantastic. So I think this week's going to be a little bit tougher. Um, but yeah, so we have uh, 100,000 in the bank, 111,000 in the bank, and nine trades left. Um so I think the aim is to finish the team with four trades left and yeah, we'll see how we go. So we'll speak about the defense. So LeBron James Sicily, we've been calling him LeBron um, because he's been scoring 130s, you know, stuff in the stat sheet every week, just like LeBron. But this week not to be 98, can't be upset with that. So it's probably, I think I had him in round one, I thought he was going to average 95, brought him in, I had him at about 100 to 105 and now I'm getting nearly one, what, 115 average or so. So unbelievable from Sicily had a few clangers today it happens didn't have his best game but that's all right uh, Hewitt did not play so happy to have him back this week and Jordan Dawson played in defense for some reasons so on the telecast they said oh he's like 50 50 defense and wing I don't believe that I, I thought he was mostly defense so yeah, happy with uh, the Jordan Dawson pick so far, and uh, I think what happened was I brought in Haitley in Supercoat in Air for Fantasy, and Dawson went down back, and Haitley went on the wing. So that kind of stuffed both picks up a little bit. So see how we go long term, but uh, Dawson's been great. Uh, Crisp just averaged fourth quarter, but other than that, it was good. Short didn't play, and yeah, sad that we're going to trade Paddy McCartan this week because he's been fantastic for us. So. Um, yeah, I, what's his break even? 52, so he's going to make more money, but I think we let him go. I think we need to make an upgrade and get an extra play on the field this week. So obviously this defense, Rear and, uh, Weir and Thompson, I don't know if Weir plays next week. I hope so. And then Thompson, he's listed as, it says expected to be available around 15. I reckon they'll probably give him a bit more time than that because Gold Coast could make finals from here. So probably get him right maybe hopefully he's good for the last six rounds or something and he can cover for us but we'll see so the midfield so we did captain rory laird i thought laird versus west coast half the reason why i brought him in is because he plays west coast this week and plays north in two weeks and then plays him again both later in the year 
yeah, not the greatest week for a 130 captain because I figure a lot of people would have captained Oliver if they didn't have... Um, well, I think maybe Neil was probably hard to captain because potentially Aish was going to tag him and potentially Oliver cop some attention from like a row bottom or something. Not too sure. And then tuke has been like a bit up and down. So I didn't really want to captain him. But against North, you would think that's relatively safe. And I never thought about captaining Gorn. JD said, why don't you captain Gorn this week, I think, on the podcast, something like that. And I was like, oh, no, nah, I don't really trust Gorn as C. I prefer just VC for him. So, yeah, should have done that. But hindsight's whatever. So loss. I mean, happy that we finally got a 120 plus captain, but just not the right week. So that's whatever. And yeah, Clary was really good. Uh, Neil, I don't know, it wasn't super great today. That's all right. I don't think he got attention to the fourth. No, no, Brayshaw got attention in the fourth quarter, not Neil. So Neil, they let him run free. That's whatever. And then Laird was really, really good. Add a few turnovers. I think he had nearly 20 tackle attempts and only tackled half of that roughly. So could have been much bigger, but that's all right. And he kicked a goal. He doesn't usually kick goals, so you take that. Uh, McRae's been a bit down lately. That's that's all right. I think he's he, he was a bit better this week, but didn't show in the super coach score. And yeah, Tuke, unbelievable. So it's fine. Now, Cristiano Petrarca. I don't know about this one. Um, the only... The main issue I have with this is that I don't think he's... Given he has these sort of scores in him, uh, I don't think he's a top eight mid because there's Walsh, there's Parrish, Callum Mills... Dare I say Josh Kelly, who plays North this week, ugh, um, might be pushing if he continues the inside mid role under the new coach. So, yeah, it's uh, I guess maybe he was a bit unwell from the week before, but I don't know. Plus, he had, you know, probably has to manage the knee through the year. That's whatever. You think he give him after the bye, or even this week, you know, he can bounce back. He's been... He's very capable of going 110 plus from here, so it's fine. Um, but you're very annoying because that's like 50 points a week, two weeks in a row that we've just bled against, I don't know, 70% of the comp. Uh, Greg Clark's been quite disappointing and it's less his fault and more to do with how they're using him. So I think he got a few CBAs on the weekend, I can't remember, but mostly playing outside role. Like, what's the point? I don't know what they're doing down there at West Coast. And then Connor McDonald. So I did hype him up on the podcast. Been hyping him up for fix for five weeks. You know, he's the only rookie with the... One of the only rookies with the last buy. You got to hold him, play through the buys. And his score dropped off. So that was pretty pointless. Uh, kicked an early goal, but had a few really bad turnovers. So I think he had like a negative 20 fantasy to super coach. So um, yeah, it is what it is. And then our bench didn't play. Um, in the rucks, so Witt and Gorn. Obviously, if Witt and Gorn go well and Darcy goes poorly, which I think everyone everyone has probably two of the three by this point, unless you're still banking on Pruce, um, then we're going to have a, probably have a good week. So a lot of people would be looking at bringing Darcy in. I think Meek heard his scoring, and he just didn't have a didn't have a great game either. So I think with Meek in the team, Gorn and Witt are the top two. But if Meek is out of the team, I think Darcy can probably match 120 for sure because he did that last year probably go 130 to be honest but I don't know it seems a bit inconsistent this year but he'll have those massive games to offset that and then we're holding Hayes through we need him for this week so we're going to hold Sam Hayes would have been nice to hold Proust instead but no money so yeah we brought in uh, Tim English also yeah our trades last week I forgot to mention uh, we went Durden to, to Owens and he needed English so yeah, lost 15 odd points on the English trade. I think his fantasy was 95, so his fantasy was good. Kept turning it over in the middle of the ground, so that, that definitely hurt his score. But I think the dog's fixture is quite difficult now. It's been quite easy. Had a lot of games at Marvel against bottom teams in the first half of the year. Now it gets a bit harder, harder. So English, I don't really understand why they use him so much in the ruck because he definitely struggles in the ruck at times. Um, I would use him forward or even like on a wing or something. That's just me personally because essentially a lot of what he does, like he can take the big grabs around the ground. That's good, but he gets a lot of uncontested marks around the ground and links up in chains, which really midfielders can do. And he could be used elsewhere as like a forward target, I feel. So they definitely have a lot of midfielders that can take plenty of marks around the ground. So for me, that's how I would use him, but uh, they know better than a super coacher living with his parents. So... Um, yeah, definitely 
definitely think they should use him differently. So, yeah, whatever. And then Dunkley, role wasn't super great. So we failed the vice captain on him, but that's whatever. And uh, Bill Brody was incredible. Again, his contested work is some of the best I've seen. And I think he can actually push for all Australian. So how's he going to go with Nat Fife in the team? Uh, not too sure. I, I seriously doubt they... Uh, Fife takes much away from him, if anything, because he's just been so good. So, and yeah, how's Fife gonna go? I think he had 24 touches in the waffle. So, I don't know. Will they balance him forward and mid? Probably, but um, I assume Fife's tog won't be super high as well. So, see how that goes. But maybe it's Sorong that gets hurt. Sorong, Sorong can play forward. I think he, back dating back to the junior days. I think, but they probably want him in the middle. You got Brayshaw can. You know, should play inside, but you know, perfectly fine to start on a wing. But they probably want him inside at this point in, of his career. So see how it goes. So I'm not definitely not entertaining trading him at all, um, just because Fife's coming back. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, Parker 97, that's solid. Uh, and then just McComb, he was our 18th score. So unfortunately, because we didn't, we went Thompson over Buku, we lost like 10 points, 11 points for that. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's whatever. Um, so yeah, that's where we are at. Um, so our trades this week are, so I think we trade McComb for, so we need a rookie and I don't think we have one. So the, this is just a placeholder. So if we get one, we'll see, but I think Cully, he didn't play waffle this week. He supposed to play waffle in round 13 of the afl and he might play afl in round 14 as far as i know one or two k he gives a swing you know we're probably going to keep one of uh, rioli and mcdonald as our cover which is not like that's not even cover really but um based on their scoring but it's whatever at least it's something if we uh like maybe we hold greg clark i'm not sure in the mids but in the forward line we've got to trade um we have to trade good rookies because they're cashed up. So we'll see. And then our next trade will be... Uh, can we do this? No, it doesn't work. So we go McCartan to... So we look at these defenders. Well, Stuart has the buy. He's coming down. It could be worth waiting a week for Stuart, but I think we just grab the points on field this week and grab Sinclair. Yeah, Sinclair's been pretty good this year. I checked this fixture. It doesn't play GWS anymore. So GWS sent a tag to Daniel Rich. I figure if they play the Saints, they'll tag Sinclair. They don't play each other. So that's good. So I'll bring in Sinclair. And then next week, we'll look at like a Hayes to Tickle and then a Hobbs up to a mid. Um, there's a chance that that might not get us to who we want. So we might have to make another trade somewhere. So it just depends if Hayes and Hobbs, if they can go 80 plus each, I think we can have about 6, 26, 30 K. And that could get us like a Mills or a Parish or Walsh. I'm still not sure who I want, but we one of those three. I think we'll skip Merritt. Um, but yeah, I, I do like the Merritt pick if that's your price range. Um, and then we will have four or five trades left and then we'll, we'll just have to sit on that and we'll just monitor a few premiums that I'm not sure on. So I monitor short. If the mid, if he doesn't score well and starts forward too much in the, his current role, monitor Crips because he, he had one, I think even 2019 when he was all Australian, his back half of the year was pretty bad. Monitor Butters, monitor Cogs, and then Petrarca should be fine. Not too worried, but monitor him, I guess, just in case something's wrong with his knee or something, but probably not. It's just a management thing. So that's where we're lined up. So yeah, I think... If we can hold rank this week, I'll be happy. Actually, we'll, we'll look at the team as if it were finished. So that's what our team will look like. Let's say Hobbs here looks a bit better. So that's what the team will look like. So finished defense, uh, one more midfielder, finished ruck line, and I consider this a finished forward line. I finished Ruckland and finished forward line. So I don't think it's interesting with Bailey Smith and Bont because Baz has a, um, Baz is suspended for, well, he doesn't play this week and then he's another two weeks. So he's out for three weeks with suspension, basically, if his suspension holds. 
And then Bont's playing with a shoulder issue. So, you know, can't really get Baz because the team will be done by then. And then Bont, Bont will still probably be like a top three forward, but I don't like trading in injured players. So he's playing through a bit of soreness and uh, had a good fourth quarter, but before that was probably struggling a little bit. And I think they picked up in the commentary, like BT was saying, you know, he said he was struggling to push off his shoulder, put pressure through it. So he had that heavily taped. So I think that's something to monitor. If you have him, you definitely hold, of course. He'll keep playing, he'll play through it. And then if you don't have him, well, maybe we can discuss that on the podcast. For me, I probably won't touch him for now, but I still expect him to play every game and, I don't know, go 105 to 110, maybe more, probably more actually, if Bruce comes back and he's all good and plays midfield. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so how we're lining up for this week. Um, so I don't know if we plays. You'd think Owens plays. And then... We'll do that and bench. Okay, so say don't count where. So say five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen without where. Nineteen with where, and then twenty if we get Cully to a proper rookie. So we'll see how that goes. But I think we actually need to go one or two rookie. Uh, for next week to actually grab the mid we want because that money is important so yeah so hopefully we get 19 this week that would be great um sam durden will probably play i don't think we can grab him that's unfortunate but um yeah see how we go so i'm very happy with the team um obviously would be nice to have like a stewart and instead of crips and maybe petrarca have like a parish and walsh or something like that or mills but um and yeah maybe instead of butters have like a bont and pelly but i still think butters and cogs should have strong back halves of the year. The roles are good. Talent is there. Um, Port need to win lots of games. You know, Cox has got his role back. So we'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching. Let me know how you went. And we'll see you guys soon.